how to fight climate change with the power of uh, urban design uh, to, to make our cities more effective and have a lasting effect on our environment. Let me just jump into the topic quite quickly with, uh, with a map from uh, European Union uh, research, uh, starting from F Epson Co Cooperation. This seemingly very complicated map shows a very interesting phenomena. All the bluish areas show areas where the population is decreasing, while at the same time, the areas used for urban purposes, the covered areas, are increasing. Which is actually a shocking phenomenon that in some parts of Europe, in relatively big parts of Europe, not only in the periphery but also in the center, relatively, in relatively big areas the population is shrinking while we are using more and more space for urban purposes. Which is a waste, waste of energy, waste of resources and we are spoiling our green spaces all, all around, in all around Europe. Europe. Let me just put this whole phenomena a little bit into a historic perspective. The historic city, the European historic uh, city, has always been traditionally small, uh, and its limit was pretty much defined in many cases by the surrounding wall, and the spatial, spatial spread of the city was pretty, pretty much controlled. But then, at the beginning of the 20th century, something has changed. As a result of suburbanization and motor, individual motorization, the city started to disperse. This famous, famous drawing of two Australian researchers, Peter Newman and Jeffrey Camberthy from 1999, show a very interesting interrelation of urban residential density and traffic-oriented CO2 emissions. It actually shows Something that seems pretty obvious now, that if we have a dense urban environment, then the emissions, the CO2 emissions are pretty low, and vice versa. Of course, the situation is the worst in the United States, in North America, where because of suburbanization and extreme car dependency, cities are, cities are invading huge areas and the emissions are pretty high. But as you can see in the middle of the, of the, of the graph, we also have things to think about in, Europe, uh, in uh, Europe. Let's go a little bit deeper. What's behind all this effect? We sometimes refer to, or usually refer to, the rebound effect, or Jevons paradox, as uh, one of the phenomena behind all this. What does that exactly mean? If we raise the efficiency of a specific technology, uh, the consumption related to that technology will start to decrease, of course, but the overall consumption uh, at a nationwide level will increase. If you think about cars, if you think about car usage, when you have a, a cheap gas, cars are becoming more and more affordable, you will start driving more. Uh, and for me, right now in this uh, lecture, it's not the overall gas consumption that is interesting, but is much more interesting that as a result of that, in an, urban, in an urban context, in an urban transportation, this will lead to more and more car usage, more and more car dependency, and spatial spread, spatial uh, 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 dispersal, and the cars and the car-related infrastructure will start to eat up space, Sp uh, will eat up urban space, and will make cities to extend and be larger and larger, also because from larger distances you have this uh, uh, belief that you can reach functions very easily through individual motorization. But this is not the way how we should be thinking about cities when we uh, talk about cl uh, fighting climate change. We should be using, uh, we should be mainly putting efficiency on our agenda, and efficient, efficiency of resources uh, should be uh, the main tool for reaching efficiency of resources. We should use proximity, proximity on our, uh, on our urban developments. Of course, proximity leads us to a completely different concept of looking at cities, a little bit idealistic concept, but that something that already happens, as you could see in some of the previous graphs in some parts of the world, 
the compact city. A compact city is an idea where we have relatively big dense centers or series of different density spots related in, the, in urban space. They are relatively close to each other. They are connected by public transportation or means, so, means of soft transportation. And they also have local services, jobs, residential spaces, cultural spaces at an attainable distance. But the compact city is not just simply a series of density spots, a series of boring density developments. I believe that a compact city is something uh, that in involves a variety of different characters, a variety of different functions, uh, and it's really a patchwork of a lot of different uh, uh, characters and identities that we can also see in the close vicinity of uh, our environment, of our university here in uh, Buda, southeastern Buda. But the main emphasis of my lecture is on urban density. I feel really, uh, the main message is that urban density is the key element, is the key attribute that defines a city that can fight climate change. In an, in an urban environment, we have sufficient number of users to provide uh, users for the economic sustainability of specific functions. In exchange to that, uh, in close vicinity, uh, you can reach a lot, of, a lot of different services, and it creates the functional complexity and the high level of services uh, of an urban environment. This, of course, leads to being able to reach functions in close distance. Uh, either walking or uh, using bicycle public transportation. This is reflected in the well-known 15 city concept, I guess everybody knows, uh, but my main emphasis here is not uh, the 15 minute, but the very important attribute behind that, urban density. And let's go a little bit deeper into what urban density means in our environment in, Budap in the case of Budapest. With a lot of international students, we did, we did a massive research called Urban Density Atlas, defining uh, uh, density attributes of urban environments. We went a little bit de deeper than the usual uh, data that you can acquire from the census, and we looked at how uh, density relates to urban character, urban identities, architecture forms, development forms, and defined uh, density figures with uh, the indicator flats per hectare or flats, number of flats per 10,000 square meters. And if we look at the spatial distribution of density, residential density, in the case of Budapest, we see a very interesting patchwork that has a, a lot uh, to learn from. At some areas, these are the dark reddish spots on the map, you can find residential densities that are extremely high even surpassing 400 flats per hectare, which is, which is almost higher than some of the residential density of far eastern cities. Uh, at these areas, the livability conditions are, are not that uh, uh, perfect. Green spaces, the amount of green spaces is pretty low. But at the same time, in this huge wasteland of light green areas all around the city, we have one-family houses where the residential density does not reach the 30 to 50 flats per hectare minimum density that should be there for the economic sustainability of basic functions, public transportation, uh, medical services, whatever. If we would use the highest density in Budapest for all the residential areas, we could fit everybody more or less inside the Hungarian ring uh, of the circle that you see. But looking at the other way, if we would have only one-family houses all over the place, we would need two and a half times bigger Budapest than what we have today, an immense space that eats off uh, natural possibilities. So we should really seriously think about not supporting one-family house developments not only because of uh, uh, fighting climate change, but because of emissions, because of efficiency, and a lot of other things. So why am I talking about urban design? Because I believe that one of the key issues of fighting 
climate change is to create livable and sustainable urban density. Livable and sustainable urban density that is dense enough to provide the economic sustainability, so it creates the functionality of our urban environments, but its density is low enough to create livability, have enough green spaces, provide enough public spaces in between spaces also for our social interactions. Of course, this, this uh, uh, number can mean a lot of things concerning character, can result a lot of different urban forms, but it's actually really the task of urban design to find the proper character, to find the proper building form that provides well-defined livability conditions for all parts of the society, creates the socially sensitive just city uh, through uh, residential, high-quality residential conditions and inclusive, livable, inclusive public spaces also in between the buildings. So urban design, I believe, urban design has to reflect and has to be sensitive to nature, has to be sensitive to the environment. It has to deal with green spaces. It has to provide good relation to green qualities. And it has to also provide spaces in between for social interactions, uh, for amenities and for public interactions as well, as you can also see in some of the real-life projects that I'm referring to and some of the university projects that we did at university with students. But it's also the task of urban design to produce and uh, have livable spaces in between for social interactions, of course, preferably without cars or with uh, the annoying uh, 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 influence of cars in general, and I believe it's also a task of urban design to identify spaces where, uh, in a spontaneous way, we can have uh, interactions and we can also enjoy the beauties of the city or the beauties of our specific environment. And finally, a few ideas. I believe the city, one of the key elements of a city is complexity. Complexity where, through proximity, we bring together a lot of different elements. First of all, we have residential spaces because users provide uh, the basic background for any, any urban environment. But at the same time, in close vicinity, we have other functions, amenities, public functions, culture, cultural institutions, uh, and so on. If this doesn't work, the city will die. The city will cease to exist. And finally, let me finish uh, with a proverb, with a famous proverb, or rephrasing a famous proverb that is often used in urban design. Uh, the good city is like a good party. You stay longer because you like being around other people. Thank you very much for your attention.